today I'm going to talk about jet lag and the science behind it. This is something we've all heard about and most of us have experienced it. Turns out jet lag is actually a sleep disorder and it's something pretty serious that we should consider. People who travel a lot are actually at higher risk of things like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. It has other fancy scientific names out there like dysrhythmia and desynchronosis. In our bodies, we have a 24 hour clock called our circadian rhythm. And that's controlled by something in our brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Oh. Pretty crazy word, hey? I can hardly say it. So those special nerve cells in our brain are in charge of little clocks all over our body. One of the major overarching ways that happens is through a hormone that's made in our pineal gland, also in our brain, called melatonin. You may have heard of that. It's something that as the light gets less in the evening, our brain makes more melatonin and that's what makes us sleepy at night, so we go to sleep. But it changes a whole bunch of other things as well. For example, it makes our core body temperature low at night and that's part of sleeping. And that comes up when we're gonna get up in the morning. And when we fly, that gets all out of sync. So if even if you do sleep well when you travel, when you go to get up in the morning because you're out of sync, your core body temperature is still low. So when you get up, you still feel fatigued because your body hasn't kicked in into that alert mode yet because of those signals haven't changed. Those signals in our brain, they affect not just our sleeping, but our eating and how alert we feel during the day. It changes other things as well, like our growth and it changes things like our blood pressure, and it affects our blood sugar levels. It turns out that how we eat in the evening has a bigger effect on our blood sugar levels than how we eat in the morning. Frequent jet lag can give you a higher risk of diabetes and other different metabolic effects like that as well. One of the other effects on our body when we fly and we get all out of sync like that is it affects our immune function. So when you get sick after a trip and you blame the other people that were coughing around you on the plane, that may be part of it. But another part of it is that jet lag and those changes in our body causes your immune system to not have as much defense to it as well. One thing to keep in mind is some of this is actually just travel fatigue. It's tiring traveling all day. And so even people who fly south, for example, for a long ways and don't change time zones, they'll often feel really tired as well. And they may get other symptoms like headaches. And some of that can be coming from eating really poorly when you travel, getting dehydrated from not drinking enough. So I mentioned that suprachiasmatic nucleus in our brain and how it controls all of these clocks around our body. And they have in those special nerve cells in our brain specific genes that are called clock genes. And when you end up out of sync like that, they start expressing or making special proteins to help your body adjust but they're really only very good at adjusting for about an hour a day. So if you've traveled across three time zones, conventional wisdom is it takes about three days, but and it can kind of vary a little bit. And one of those things that's very different is it's actually worse when you travel east than what it is when you travel west. And the reason for that is those clocks in our body aren't actually exactly 24 hours. We're at about 24 and a half hours. So our body is constantly having to adjust to that half hour difference each day. When you travel west, it's a longer day and you have more time to adjust. But when you're going east and you get that shorter day, it's oh. harder for your body to adjust. So it actually takes you longer to get past that jet lag when you go that direction. <sighs> So another thing I wanted to talk about related to jet lag is something special called social jet lag. Social jet lag happens when you have a very different schedule on the weekend than you do during the week. So for people who are staying up partying and going to bed at one in the morning on the weekend, and then regularly going to bed at 10 in the evening, this is really like you've traveled somewhere and you have that three hour time change and it has all of those same effects on your body. So they actually did a study and that found out there was a much higher risk of obesity in people the more difference they had in their schedule from what they did in the weekend and what they did during the week. The whole idea around how you manage jet lag when you do travel is a huge topic and there's lots of stuff you can look at and lots of tips there and so you'll just have to stay tuned because down the road we will do another video on tips for managing that jet lag. Thank you and I hope you got something out of this. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Leave any comments or questions and please follow us so you can get more of these great wellness videos.